verses 1, 3, and 4. So, any questions? Thank you all so very much. I know, I know. <laughs> it must have been someone else. It was like you said that song.
Thank you. We are so glad that you have chosen to gather with us this morning on this like kind of cold, I feel like we've sort of crossed that line from like nice fall cool to like it's just cold. So we're glad you're here. Um, a few notes this morning. Um, once again, after the service, we will be um, selling Second Church face masks and gaiters. I see some of you sporting them this morning, so love that. Um, once again, those are $20, and you get two packs, which will be um, each pack is one mask and one gaiter, so you can keep one and give one. Um, and all of the proceeds from that will go to the crop walk and to the Start Small diaper ministry in Des Moines. Um, a few other notes. Um, most of you know and have been praying for the Sauberts. Doug is in the ICU now at Pella Regional um, battling COVID. So um, they ask for your continued prayers for his healing and recovery. And also an update on Connie Banstra's sister, Jackie. She is improving. She remains in the hospital, um, but is improving from um, her accident uh, earlier in the week. So both the Banstras and the Sauberts um, ask for your continued prayers. Are there any other joys and concerns this morning that you would like us to remember in our prayers? Um, lastly, if you would, the friendship pads are on either ends of your pews. If you would just sign in, um, that would be great and a big help to us. So you don't have to pass them, but we do ask that you um, sign in on your end of the pew. Um, and I think that is it. So I invite you now to take a deep breath. Let yourself feel centered and grounded in the pew and let us worship God together. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God the loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome. A great king over all the earth, God has gone up with a shout. The Lord, with the sound of a trumpet, sings praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises.
pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together. Help us to open our ears, hearts, and minds to your word and your presence in our life. In your name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, now it is children's time and time for all you who are young at heart. So this week, I decided I was going to try and look for the green man. And I found the green man, but you might notice I don't have anything with me. That's because where I saw the green man was too big and too hard to bring to church. So I'm just going to have to tell you about it, and you'll have to imagine. Can you do this? Good. I hope so. So on Thursday morning, I was driving to church, and you might remember Thursday morning was very foggy. And as I was driving, I noticed that the fog was thick, and it kind of surrounded everything. It looked a little bit like marshmallows or mashed potatoes or like a cloud because that's what fog is. A cloud that settles and hovers gently on the earth. And this is where I saw the green man because in the fog I was reminded of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes at Pentecost, we think of the Holy Spirit. We talk about the Spirit like a dove or like fire. 
But on Thursday morning, I thought of the spirit like fog, gently hovering, just like the Bible tells us the spirit did at creation. The Bible says the spirit hovered, or some translations say fluttered, like a butterfly over the deep. And that's what the fog looked like to me. Also, it looked like the fog was gently holding the world together on Thursday morning. And that's also what the Spirit does. The Spirit sustains us. The Spirit holds us gently. And so when I saw the fog, I was reminded that when the world is really hard or when things feel a little bit scary or uncertain, just like the fog gently holds, so does the Spirit. And so my invitation to you is to keep thinking and looking for where you see the Spirit. Where is she holding things gently? Where is she hovering? Where is she enveloping you and the world around you like a soft cloud of fog? So that's where I saw the green man. And maybe in the next few days, sometimes when the weather is changing, we see fog even more. So look for fog the next few mornings when you're going to school or to work, and you might notice it looks like the Spirit. So let's pray together, and then we'll receive our blessing. Loving God, we are grateful for the gift of your Spirit. Your spirit that from the very beginning of time has hovered and fluttered over the world. Thank you for the way the spirit gently holds us. The way the spirit is soft. And the way the spirit invites us into gentleness. And so we ask this week that you would help us have our eyes open to notice the ways the Spirit is gently keeping us. Thank you for your love for us. Through Christ we pray, amen. And now, children, receive this blessing. Grow in wisdom, grow in stature, and grow in the love of the Lord. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is Corinthians 12 through 13, 7. For just as the body is one and and has many members, all the members of the body, though many, are one body, and so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves and free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But, it is, it, but as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one as he, cho- as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members of one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, 
I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think are less honorable, we clothe with great honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there is no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, and then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive to the greater gifts. And I will show you all I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in tongues of mortals or of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I do but do not have love, I have nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I have gained nothing. Love is patient, and love is kind. Love is not envious, or boastful, or arrogant, or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I am not athletic. In recent months, I've tried to become a runner, but it's been a little sporadic. When I was younger, I did gymnastics for a number of years, but I just like wasn't that good. So for a non-coordinated girl like me, gym class was without a doubt my least favorite in school. I dreaded PE, and especially in high school, became pretty good at coming up with any excuse not to participate. One of my most vivid memories from PE class is from about sixth or seventh grade. It was the baseball unit. We were getting ready to start a game and teams were chosen. I was picked last. This was classic. Everyone knew I was not the most athletically inclined or the most enthusiastic participant. We began the game with one notable rule change. We would not be playing three strikes, you're out. We would be playing that you were at bat until you got a hit. Swell. It was my turn at bat. Three swings with the traditional baseball bat and nothing. So my teacher, Mrs. Rogers, gave me a wiffle ball bat. If you're unfamiliar, it's like a baseball bat, but bigger. Three tries with the wiffle ball bat, still no hit. She then got out a big paddle, like tennis racket size, hoping that the incredibly large surface area would guarantee a hit. The longer this went on, the more embarrassed I became. I would clearly not be joining the major leagues, and that was fine. I have never had any aspiration to be a professional athlete. 
So can you just let me walk and let's keep this game moving? But no, the rule was you had to get a hit. Finally, I got a fairly pathetic hit with the giant paddle and the game kept moving. Bless Mrs. Rogers' heart. She was not only committed to the idea that everyone gets to play, but also that everyone should be a great batter. It just didn't work out so well. Baseball teams need more than just good batters. In her book, Out of Sorts, Sarah Bessie teaches about the truth that in the church, everyone gets to play. She explains that in the church, quote, everyone gets to minister, everyone gets to hear from God, everyone has a part to play in the church and in the world. Everyone gets to speak life and healing, to pray and to serve, to lead and to follow. We are priests to one another and for one another. We all get to play. Bessie goes on to explain that often the narrative we hear in the church is that ministry is for ministers, those who are seminary trained and have the proper credentials. And while I obviously think that being seminary trained or being ordained to a particular office matters, I think the invitation is not to assume that those are the only voices that matter or those are the only people who have something to offer. Everyone gets to play. This idea of everyone gets to play is what Paul is inviting us to in this second part of chapter 12. Every part of the body is needed, and every one of us is part of the body. But unlike my PE teacher, Mrs. Rogers, Paul is not expecting everybody to be a batter. Some may need to catch, others pitch, and still others have to bring the snacks. That I could be good at. But everyone gets to play, whether the in crowd or the out crowd, Jew or Greek, the lowest or the highest, slave or free. And no one is more or less important or needed than another. For as Paul says, the Spirit has baptized us all into this one body. Now today, our divisions aren't quite Jew or Greek, slave or free specifically, but we all know the in and the out crowds of our society and community. The lower, the higher members that are often kept out or excluded from playing and participating. Historically and not so historically, the church has told women, we have no need for you. Or LGBTQ folks, we have no need for you. And yet we know the church has need for them. And when some parts of the body are suffering, we put on band-aids or turn and look the other way. Black members of the body are suffering and the church has not been quick to condemn and repent of white supremacy and a history of colonization, although we must. Disabled people have suffered at our ableist buildings and practices, and we have not been quick to make changes, although we must. Paul says plainly that when one part suffers, the whole body suffers with it. And the eyes can't say to the feet, we have no need of you. So I wonder what we have missed out on by telling certain people we have no need for them or not tending to the wounds that have been inflicted on particular parts of the body. As Eugene Peterson's The Message version says, we have cared more for full-bodied hair than vital organs. We have cared more about maintaining status and appearance than valuing the parts of the body that keep us healthy and whole. This teaching from Paul stands in direct opposition to all that our Western North American society values. Not only in the church, but out in our societies. We climb corporate ladders. We like to network with the powerful so we might gain recognition through association. 
We work to build our savings accounts while many around us go without. We praise those with top credentials and operate in systems and spaces that have been designed to keep others out. But this is not what Paul is inviting us to. Paul is wanting to show us a still more excellent way. A way that honors all members, that says the feet and the eyes are just as important as the kidney and the liver. The current pandemic has highlighted just how crucial the lesser jobs truly are. We need Walmart employees to keep shelves stocked and carts sanitized. We depend on those in food service to prepare and deliver our takeout orders while we work safely from home. We need Amazon drivers and farmers and gas station attendants. Perhaps this can help us see that, as Paul says, those members of the body we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And this is true within the church as well. I'm sure that not many of you have met our new custodian, Shane, but Shane, along with Cindy, have worked incredibly hard to keep our building clean and sanitized and safe so that we can gather here together. This is a vital role, especially in a global health crisis. We cannot begin to express how critical Jim Emmer and Lauren Blom are as sound and video folks. As we have spent many weeks worshiping at home, and while many of our community continue to do so, these skills and these workers are invaluable. This time that we're in has taught us that the church is indeed more than what we do on Sunday mornings, and more than just those with seminary degrees. It's each and every one of you doing your part to love your neighbor. Some of you have delivered groceries, some have sent cards of encouragement. Some have made meals. Your prayers for one another and for our church matter. In God's economy and in the body of Christ, the small things are the big things. Everybody gets to play. This is how we love. Paul continues by teaching us what love is. Often we hear this love poem at weddings, and often we hear it isolated on its own. But in the context of scripture, it comes right after Paul encourages us to let everybody play and have a part in the body of Christ. Right after we are urged to honor all members of the body and suffer together, work together, and live together. Love is patient. Love is patient with those who are discovering what their gifts are and what part they play within the whole. Love is patient when in that process, people make mistakes. Love is kind when offering gentle correction. Love is kind when we speak to one another and offer feedback. Love is not envious, boastful, or arrogant because love knows that no one gift or skill or offering is greater than the other. Love can accept correction without biting back out of pride. It doesn't wish it was an eye instead of a finger because it knows its own value. Love does not insist on its own way. Love is collaborative and can hear the ideas of others. Love has curiosity and the desire to hear and learn about ways and ideas that are different from its own. Love is not irritable or resentful. Love does not resent the hand for not being a foot or the eye for not being an ear. It celebrates what is unique to each part and member and doesn't get irritated when things go differently than planned. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. When another part of the body makes a mistake, love does not laugh or gossip about it to others. Love does not take delight in the suffering of others. But love celebrates when truth is told, even when it's hard. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. 
When things get hard or uncomfortable, love is not the first to quit and walk away. Love checks up on the others and offers a word of encouragement and hope. Love believes that the spirit is at work. Love moves closer to the pain instead of away from it. Love hopes the very best for the whole body, not just the parts it likes the most. Love never fails, and without it, we are noisy gongs and clanging cymbals, and our work is empty. This is the more excellent way Paul invites the church in Corinth to. And I believe the invitation is for us today. And not just Paul, but Jesus invites us to this more excellent way, to a way of love and full participation, of celebrating everyone who contributes, of lamenting and joining in the sorrows of the parts of the body that suffer. Jesus showed us a love that was patient and kind as he listened to the stories of others and welcomed the children. He showed us a love that didn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rather in the truth of forgiveness and mercy. Jesus showed us a love that was not self-seeking, but humble, forsaking all the riches of heaven to become like us and being obedient to death on a cross. A love that endures all things, hopes all things, and believes all things. This is how we are loved. We are loved with a patient, kind, enduring, honest, humble, and unfailing love. And we are a part of sharing this love with those around us. The Spirit of God has joined us together as the body of Christ. God has arranged us exactly as God saw best. God has appointed what we should do and who we should be. So we have the honor of loving one another exactly as we are. So, beloved, own your place on the team. Take delight in the work God has placed in front of you, the big things and the small things, catcher or batter. Know that the part you play matters. It's needed and it's wanted. Take delight in the work of those around you, whatever it may be. Encourage the hands to keep caring well and the feet to keep marching. Encourage the heart to keep feeling the deep things. Encourage the eyes to see the world as God sees it. Encourage the ears to listen closely to the stories of others. And love one another. Love one another with a love that is patient and kind, humble and enduring, honest and unfailing. Love one another with the love of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, beloved, we will respond to what we have heard by affirming our faith with the words of the Shema. Let's join our voices together. Listen, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Oh, that you would love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your strength. Amen. Let us turn to God in prayer. God of love, your word tells us that the greatest commandment is to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us to love you and one another well. We pray that you would help us love with patience Patience for kids who take a little extra time doing tasks. Patience for drivers who fail to use their turn signals. 
patience for our coworkers or classmates who seem to push all the right buttons. Patience as we navigate grocery aisles and wait in lines. Help us love with kindness. Kindness for those who think differently than we do. Help us respond in kindness to those who offend us. Give us kindness when our order is wrong in the drive through line and we're already running late. Teach us to love our bodies with kindness. Help us love without envy and arrogance. Give us humility when we are corrected and when we are correcting. Help us have confidence in our own gifts and abilities, not wishing we had someone else's. Keep our arrogance and our pride at bay when we engage in conversations or heated dialogue on social media. Let our boast be in Christ alone. Gracious God, keep us from insisting on our own way. Help us celebrate the different ways people do various tasks. Keep us from rearranging dishwashers or refolding laundry when it isn't done quite as we prefer. Help us withhold our judgment when someone chooses to drive a potentially longer route than we would have chosen. Give us delight in differences and curiosity to learn from someone else. God, sometimes we find ourselves rejoicing in wrongdoing we find satisfaction watching people we struggle to love fail or mess up or get caught. Forgive us. Be generous toward us with compassion and mercy, that we might be generous in offering it to others. Let our first response be with love. Teach us to be honest. Sometimes telling the truth is hard and risky. Help us speak it anyway. Sometimes when we hear the truth, it means we might have to change our minds. And that can feel scary and overwhelming. Help us try it anyway. May we trust others when they tell us their stories and give us the courage to honestly tell our own. And God, would you help us hope for all things and endure all things? Keep our feet steady as we walk through life. Help us not run away too quickly when things get tough. Give us strength to bear the burdens of others and the hope that others will gently hold our burdens when we need help. Give us bravery to hope that you are making all things new and one day all will be well. May we be quick to share that hope with others. Thank you for your love for us that never fails. Thank you that your spirit lives in us and reminds us of your gentle, sustaining love. We are grateful for the love you showed us in Jesus Christ. Hear us now as we join our voices and pray the way Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
beloved, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Creator, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.